Coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. We'll get their feedback on um, different aspects to make sure that, you know, it will be manufacturable for them. So those are weekly, bi-weekly meetings as well as design reviews. A lot of the entrepreneurs and scientists who are developing these tests don't want to put what they view as arbitrary constraints on their ability to solve that problem. And this is where you get into the problems is, yes, they're solving a problem, but are you building a bridge to nowhere if it's not manufacturable? Hello, and welcome to X Talk Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're exploring a critical question. Why do so many diagnostics fail at scale? And what role should your manufacturer really play? Scaling a diagnostic from prototype to production often reveals challenges that startups haven't fully planned for, particularly in point-of-care settings where manufacturability and cost can't be afterthoughts. One way to address these challenges is by involving a manufacturing partner early, rather than treating it as a final handoff which informs smarter design choices, reduces the risk of redesign, and improves scalability. In this x -Talk Spotlight edition, we spoke with Dr. Nancy Schoenbrunner, CEO and co-founder of Amplify DX, and Dr. Chris Strosel, President and CEO of Drummond Scientific Company. Together, they shared how early collaboration on the DX100 system's cartridge design helped identify and address production challenges well before they could impact timelines or budgets. They also offered practical takeaways for diagnostic startups on aligning product goals with manufacturing realities. Thank you for taking the time in the Spotlight interview, Chris and Nancy. Thank you, Samia. It's really exciting to be here. I can't wait to have this conversation. Yes, thank you so much for the opportunity. Can't wait to share our experiences in incorporating the voice of manufacturing. So to start off, I have a two-part question about when and why Amplify DX decided to bring a manufacturing partner into the development process for the DX100 system. Chris, I'll start with you first. Why did Drummond decide to work with Amplify? When we decide to work with companies, we oftentimes view it as a professional investor would. We go through a diligence process to, to vet the opportunity in general. So does it fit with our mission? Is it a company that's developing something that either creates lives or helps to save lives? Is it addressing a, a market need, both in terms of a disease state that's prevalent and large? Uh, is there a reimbursement strategy for the uh, device that they're going down? Uh, you know, the, the typical diligence questions that you would get from an angel group or uh, a venture investor to make sure that it's ultimately worth our effort to help them scale. Once we get through that and we check all those boxes, then it comes down to who's the person? Is it someone we want to work with? And, and certainly Nancy checks those boxes in huge ways. She's uh, well-renowned in her, her career and her experience developing diagnostic technology. She has that uh, gravitas behind her. Uh, but more importantly, she's just a wonderful work person to work with. And, and we fully enjoy uh, everything we do with them. And Nancy, what drove Amplify to work with Drummond as a manufacturer so early? Well, it comes down to very similar uh, capabilities, uh, willingness, like the, the um, attitude. And Drummond especially, you know, they have this unique venture manufacturing um, uh, philosophy. And that, that's very unique in, amongst contract manufacturers. Uh, Capability-wise, I know that the engineering team there is top-notch. Um, they have the the capability. Uh, it wasn't all completely built out, so I knew we were going to be going on this journey together because sometimes there's contract manufacturers that say, oh, yeah, we've done this so many times. We know exactly what to do. 
And then they're going to guide you down a certain pathway in your design that will fit with their processes. And I, I didn't want to do that. Um, we wanted to have um, some freedom of design space um, on both the performance and the manufacturability. And also the people. Drummond is uh, great to work with. We just have a lot of fun. Now, Nancy, since the partnership, how have Amplify and Drummond worked together during the design of the cartridge? What does that collaboration look like in practice? And do you have any specific examples that you would like to share? So there's two parts to that. One is just logistics and the other is design input. On the logistics side, we meet regularly depending on how intense the phase is. It could be weekly, it could be bi-weekly, monthly if things are a little slow, just to make sure that we can get cartridges that are well-made by, by Drummond for important field studies or clinical studies. But more importantly, on the design aspect, so we, we, have we as we've iterated on the design of the DX100 cartridge, uh, we'll have we'll include Drummond in our design reviews. We'll get their feedback on um, different aspects to make sure that you know it will be manufacturable for them. So those are weekly, biweekly meetings as well as design reviews. Some specific examples are just thinking about how to be able to place the beads, our lyophilized beads, um, certain design aspects to make the uh, film assembly on the top of the cartridge, easy to automate. Um, and another one was uh, we initially had a, a gasket on the back of our first generation cartridge, and we wanted to look for ways to replace that and make the manufacturing process as easy as possible. Those conversations and those inputs have taken months, if not like over the span of two years. So it's just regular touch points and really getting that, that feedback early. And Chris, when it comes to manufacturability and scalability, why do so many point-of-care diagnostic companies struggle? And how are you approaching that differently? I can speak to this from a lot of experience, unfortunately, but the, the real answer is, is they just don't think about it in time. Uh, and that's not their fault. Uh, Nancy, in her last uh, answer, described all these features that went into developing her test. And that's sort of underscores the fact that developing an assay for a disease that will work in a clinical milieu is really, really difficult. And a lot of the entrepreneurs and scientists who are developing these tests don't want to put what they view as arbitrary constraints on their ability to solve that problem. And this is where you get into the problems is, yes, they're solving a problem, but are you building a bridge to nowhere if it's not manufacturable? So our view is that we need to take a little bit of the risk, engage with uh, our partners as early as possible. And I'm talking about the second that they have the, the chemistry done and are starting to design the enclosures that will encapsulate that test to help them make sure that decisions that they're making with respect to what the cartridge looked like, how it uh, is put together is done with the idea of making hundreds of thousands of these a month, millions of these a month, because the reality is if you can't do that, you don't have a viable product. And ultimately, as much as we want to be altruistic, you have to be able to sell it into the market. And to wrap up, what advice would you give to other diagnostic startups about working with a manufacturing partner to accelerate commercialization? Well, you want to pick your partner wisely, a partner that's going to be willing to at least invest some time in you early to give you that feedback. It doesn't need to have been as intense as what we're going through, which is wonderful. It's such a gift. But at least being able to speak with somebody that's on the manufacturing side early uh, we also focused on making the chemistry as simple and robust as possible. We really put a lot of effort into that because with the simple chemistry workflow, then the cartridge is also simple. And with the simple cartridge, we, we also have a simple and low cost instrument. And I would echo that one of the things that Amplify and Nancy have done you know, over the course of the time we're working for has 
gone from a very unmanufacturable chemistry to one that becomes much more simple with respect to what we are going to have to do to build out the, the capabilities to manufacture it at scale uh, without sacrificing performance. And, and that ultimately is what's going to lead to a successful product. Well, thank you very much, Chris and Nancy, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. Thank you, Simon. This has been a pleasure. It's always great to talk to Nancy, and we love talking about diagnostics whenever we can. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Thank you. We look forward to hearing more from Amplify DX and Drummond Scientific as they continue to share insights on enhancing diagnostic development through early stage manufacturing collaboration. Thank you all for joining us for this X Talk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion. Thank you.